from NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Meredith Vieira. Now the latest on that fight over a proposed Islamic community center in lower Manhattan, just a couple of blocks away from Ground Zero. In a moment, we'll talk exclusively to the developer behind that project. But first, NBC's Ron Allen has the latest on it. Ron, good morning. Good morning to you, Matt. Numerous public opinion polls from respected organizations continue to say the same thing, that most Americans and most New Yorkers are against the idea of an Islamic community center and mosque here, some two blocks from ground zero, if the developers are determined to push forward. And lately, some of the opposition has gotten very personal. America is a Christian nation. The fight to stop what opponents call the ground zero mosque is relentless, staging protests, filing lawsuits. Paladino says now the Republican candidate for governor in New York says hallowed ground from 9-11 extends wherever the dust cloud landed. He's vowed to take action if elected. As governor, I will use the power of eminent domain to stop the mosque and use the site as a war memorial. Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, the project's spiritual leader, has tried to dismiss the argument that the building is in a sacred place. First of all, it is absolutely disingenuous, as many have said that that block is hallowed ground you know, with a strip joint around the corner with bedding parlors. He's tried to convince the 9-11 families. He's sensitive to their concerns. I pray for the souls of your loved lost ones. If 9-11 happens there again, I want to be the first to die. Muslims want to stand right there to say that we are here. The developers of the Islamic Center like to point out that hundreds of worshipers already gather every Friday for prayers in the abandoned building two blocks from ground zero. And that when the community center is expanded to some 16 floors, only about 10% of it will be a prayer space. Fight against this mosque! Meanwhile, opponents have been trying to focus attention on recent unflattering headlines about the imam. A lawsuit charging he ignored poor conditions in an apartment building he owns. His lawyer has said repairs are taking place. And questions have been raised about the business dealings of lead developer Sharif El Gamal, including reports of eviction proceedings and an arrest record. I am not against a mosque. I am against the location of the mosque. Opponents of the project continue to insist the only solution is to move the center far from ground zero. But how far is far enough is not clear. And both the developer and the imam I find to be radically intolerant in their callous dismissiveness of the pain and the grief they are causing. And that's become one of the loudest arguments against the projects. The developers have said that it will help build bridges between Muslims and members of other faith communities. But opponents say that certainly is not happening. On the other side, there are steadfast supporters of the project, including New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg and other city leaders who continue to insist the issue is religious freedom and tolerance. Matt? Hi, uh, Ron Allen. Thank you very much. Sharif El Gamal, the developer behind the proposed Islamic Community Center, joins us now exclusively. Mr. El Gamal, good morning. Nice to have you here. Good morning, Matt. Thank I, you for having me. I, I grew up in this city. I don't remember an issue that has generated so much talk so much rhetoric so much controversy you have said your plans go forward you will continue along this path do you expect that in the near future the opposition will simply melt away and fade away you know this is this has been very unexpected unexpected it's been an eye-opener uh, to see how my country uh, the United States uh, views my religion Islam uh, it's been a very humbling moment uh, and it's been a very sad moment for me personally. You, you say unexpected. At no point during your plans when you were proposing this idea and thinking about it and buying that site, did you say, wait a minute, you know, this could cause some controversy. I know a lot of people question that. You know, um, it's, it's really been very unexpected. Uh, what happened that day was, was, was a very horrific event that I do not feel that... The, the, the people that were responsible for that event were people that hijacked my religion and my identity. Uh, just imagine if somebody went and, and stole your wallet and committed identity theft. Um, that's what's happened to me and to my community. I, I mentioned, and actually Ron mentioned in his piece, that, that some of the discussion has been well thought out, measured. 
a lot of it has been bitter and very personal, personal against you. Are you fair game as the developer of this project? Do you think that goes with the turf? It's, it's all been very unexpected. I mean, there's been so many misperceptions about me personally, about uh, Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf that have been uh, uh, perpetrated in the, in the media and uh, uh, in all the forums, and there's so many inaccuracies that have been portrayed about us. You, you mentioned Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, and, and he has said that had he known that all of this controversy would be generated, he probably wouldn't have gone through with these plans, but now he says he cannot back away from this because he doesn't want to allow the radicals to take over the discourse. The fact of the matter is, though, that it's not just the radicals. You, you know the polling numbers as well as anyone. A wide majority of Americans say, no, this should not be built at that location. What do you make of those numbers? Well, I mean, some of the facts that are not being accurately portrayed is that our community wants this. You know, uh, our, when you say our community, whose community? The residents of Lower Manhattan. You know, uh, we went through a, a voluntary process and we engaged our community, our constituents, the residents and neighbors and, and friends who reside in Lower Manhattan. And on four separate occasions, two of them, they voted unanimously for this project. On the other two occasions, they voted overwhelmingly in favor, 29, in, 29 to 1. And not a lot of people understand that we engaged our community. We got their approval and blessings prior to proceeding with these plans. Obviously, there are some people down there who, who do not want this. I think your background is interesting, and I want to make sure people understand it. You're born in Brooklyn. I am. You're a New Yorker. I You're am. an American. I am. Um, your mother was a Polish Catholic. Your father, an Egyptian, non-practicing Muslim, from what I understand. Well, practicing, but... Right, you're, and you are a practicing Muslim. I am. When you view this project, do you view this as a real estate development, a business deal, or do you view this on a more personal level, on a more spiritual level? You know, it, it's turned into both. It's turned into both. It's turned into an opportunity uh, to give back to a community uh, that has given me so much. As, as an American, uh, as someone who has prospered in this country, as someone who has gotten a lot from the city, this is an opportunity for us to give back. This is an opportunity for us to give back to a, re to a residential neighborhood that not a lot of people uh, know that is the fastest growing district neighborhood in New York State. A couple of things real quickly. There is a report on one of the websites overnight that a deal may in fact be in the works to move this center to a location at 30 Cliff Street which is about seven blocks away. Can you confirm or deny that there are still discussions underway about moving this project? There are no discussions about moving this Absolutely project. Absolutely not. There are no discussions about moving this project. Another question people have, who is ultimately going to call the shots here? Are you the final decision maker or are other people going to make those decisions? Will the imam have a say? Will the majority stakeholder have a say? Or is it you who's gonna call the shots? We, I am calling the shots. I am calling the shots and, um, you know, in a real estate transaction, there are different uh, elements that come into play, but ultimately, as the managing member, um, we are calling the shots. And, and finally, how has this changed your view of living as a Muslim American in this country? How did it change from when before this controversy erupted? You know, this has been an eye-opener. It's been truly an eye-opener, and there is so much work ahead of us. There's such a misperception about my faith and my belief system. And we are peace-loving Americans. We want the same things that everybody else wants. You know, one of the things that uh, uh, in order to be a Muslim, you have to be a good Jew and a good Christian at the same time. Not a lot of people understand who we are. And that is part of the reason, you know, fear, uh, uh, fear makes people irrational, and our identity has been hijacked by the extremists. Sharif El Gamal, I appreciate you joining me this morning. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for very your time. much for having me. Thank you.